I love Milton Keynes in many ways and I just want to eradicate the evil that's being done here. It is a beautiful city. In Milton Keynes, Miguel, we've got labyrinths. They can be an aid, can't they, to our prayer life and getting us to focus on God as we walk around in a circle. It's a good thing, surely. People say it is for various reasons. The issues around the labyrinth, they are more or less rooted in occultism, paganism. I got a book about labyrinths. It's basically showing the whole aspects of why these groups do these things because it's not about doctrine teaching but more about spirituality. So there's a problem when we bring spirituality into our Christian walk. What we're doing is we're polluting our beliefs and our relationship with God with New Age concepts. But there are like pictures, photographs of that's a massive labyrinth. So that's what a labyrinth looks, what looks like. like. But this one is a, a really big one. Uh, that one is a photo of uh, people walking around the labyrinth. That looks like a harmless maze. What's well, the difference? Okay, the, the whole title is Ancient Paths of and Wisdom Peace. It says, and I'll just read the highlights, I'm not going to read the whole book, just highlighted quotes. I mean, that, that's a, a chakra, uh, so it's linked to yoga. Um, what is a chakra? It's like different stages in uh, in the evolution of spiritual spirituality, so you have different growths. More than a million people have walked the labyrinth in the United States of America. More than a thousand labyrinths exist across at least 35 states. The success of the Global Labyrinth Society is its found two years due to profound fascination that these ancient archetypal symbols hold for so many of us. People today appear to be ready to embrace the labyrinth, a pathway to psychological and spiritual growth. In fact, they're carrying out for it in churches, schools, prisons, hospitals, retreat centres and corporations are being used to enhance healing for stress, reduction, problem solving, changing, calming the mind and vitalising the spirit. One of the things that the quote is this, the labyrinth is a riddle, it is the cosmos and the world. The life of humankind, the womb of the earth, the journey, the way to the centre, it's the way to ourselves. So it's it's very new age. It's nothing to Christianity. So you have one labyrinth there. And there's, there's over like a hundred of these pictures in this book. This is a, a picture of a labyrinth in a church. So this is what they do. Is uh, this dissimilar to prayer stations mm, in the Catholic Church? No, no. The stations of the cross, the praise, it's sort of different. This is simply about meditation. Is this more like contemplative prayer? Yeah. They do it the way it's it's more like, be. But it says uh, here, to quote, uh, I'm going to read various quotes throughout the book. In our overly rationalist, materialistic world, we're taught to mistrust our emotions and our hearts. Feelings are dangerous when we're told to in they interfere with acquisition of wealth or are a sign of moral and spiritual weakness. How liberating or alternative comforting it must be when people enter a labyrinth and discover it's the first filmless journey into the deepest emotions and thoughts towards centre. What does Jeremiah 17 11 say that the heart of man is deceitful above all things? Here they're, they're saying that we should focus on the heart uh, and listen to our emotions, which is contrary to scripture. That symbolises for them the heart of the experience lies within. Some report that they have deep sense of connection. Other word heard are commonly in association with labyrinths, divine transgender force, force or with own being or, or selfhood. It's metaphoric meanings. To begin with, many people today, the labyrinth symbolises the way in a single set clear path into an interior reality through the layers of their consciousness. So as a path like a door, very seductive, offers the premise of excitement that you discover a guidance in times of trouble as a way through the maze of life. And then you got this quote here. Always stand here at your portal, lay your labyrinth for stand greeting. Do you tremble, part in fear, part in longing? 
Entering in Mysteries and Acts of Courage by Squeaky. Then they talk about the the ancient roots of the labyrinth. Here you've got a Catholic church and uh, they're, they're doing the labyrinths. There's a picture of there a bunch of uh, pagans, uh, druids, uh, doing the labyrinth. It says, labyrinths are also appeasing platforms for dance and theatre as vehicles for artistic expression. Play like the circular arena the Greeks performed in the ancient times seem to make it excellent stages of seasonal and communal celebrations bring people together. So again, it's this whole thing about unity and togetherness. Labyrinths are highly theatrical creatures. They love the limelight and with their hyper hypnotic rings draw all eyes towards them. Lovers of nature, neo-pagans and dowsers are using them to connect to what they see as vital streams of energy contained within each for divination, healing and eco-spirituality or nature mysticism. In some places, labyrinths have become powerful symbol for the cosmos and the ancient earth goddess worshipped since Neolithic times. More labyrinths. Every page has a picture of a labyrinth. It says here, labyrinths appear to make very good grounds, indeed it's one of the most interesting features of the way that they bring people together from all thoughts, thoughts of life and faiths. Christians, Muslims, Jews, Buddhists, Neo-Pagans, New Ages, and those with no beliefs whatsoever. Within a labyrinth, you are likely to count people who believe in meditation, prayer, crystals, karma, angels, chi, spirits, Jesus, Buddha, Kali, Allah, God the Father, God the Mother, science, and no God's soul, all uniting to walk together through the labyrinth. So when they say, you know, what's wrong with having unity, we see that the, the problem is there. It says many in the West are falling out with the of churches or the birth. These perhaps less the case in America, where the rates of church stand are still the highest in the Western world. Many come to the labyrinths now they do so because they see, see them as non-religious spiritual tools, non-denominational, non-dogmatic and are safe. There's a photograph of a bunch of people who are into nature worship. So these, it gets more pagan as you go along. So would this include things like the, in Milton Keynes we've got a tree cathedral, a cathedral yeah, it's, it's, made out of trees. Yes, yeah, it's pagan. It's pagan. So, um, There's no way that these things get made in ignorance, in good faith, that they could be a tool well, for Christianity. There's a, a story about the labyrinth where uh, Zeus uh, curses a man and he, can, he, he changes him, so he's got half bull, half man. It's mine so and uh, Zeus locks him in, in the labyrinth. No, didn't. And so, so what happened was in, in Greece, in a place called Crete, they dug a site in Greece and they found the labyrinth and they found human body parts lodged in the walls because they used to do sacrifices on the site. Human sacrifice? Yeah, on, on the labyrinth. And like one, abortion in Milton Keynes? No, no, they, these were virgin women. Because well, it, so would these be these little girls that are being ripped yeah, what apart? Yeah, what I'm saying is these were fully grown women. Yeah, yeah. Um, so there we go. This is the area. This is the abortion facility coming up now. The building is called Acorn House. You've got a number of compromised businesses working in here, year after year, despite my protests, because they're offered cheap rent they turn a blind eye to the children being killed. 2,000 a year, 34 children a week on average. That's a whole classroom. That's a classroom of children every week being taken out, cold, slaughtered in cold blood. What happened was, in order to encourage prosperity in the land, Virgin women were often sacrifices to the god Zeus so that they could do farming and, and Zeus could bless them with material prosperity. I've heard that Zeus is just another term for Baal and well, it, it refers well, it, well, to it the... is, because, I mean, you, you look at, for example, the altar Bergamon, which is currently in West Germany, in the, in the museum. 
known the same seat because the Bible talks about that in Revelation. Uh, in Revelation, so World War Two, Adolf Hitler went to Greece, took the altar, and then he then sent it to Germany, so he could be close because it had supernatural power in, in it, and that's why he wanted it. But people tell me that Hitler was a Christian, and the Holocaust was the caused sense, by Christians. In the sense of being a Catholic, yes, he was. Uh, the Catholic Church was responsible partly for its involvement in the Holocaust and its alliance with Nazism, so they are correct. But it doesn't mean that the Catholic Church is therefore biblically in alignment with the Bible. So God cannot be accused of what people do in the name of Christianity. Am I wrong in when I tell Catholics, you're not a Christian, you're a Catholic, I'm a Christian, and there's a huge difference? Well, you, you can say that by definition, that they are Christians, but they are not biblically based. They're not what we call born again, because you can't be born again and remain in the church room. You have to come out. I found this one interesting. This is uh, Morris Dances on the Labyrinth. The maypole. I um, used to do maypole dancing at primary school. You know what I the used... maypole is? No, I don't know. It's a phallic object. A phallic, so that they had, could they have done it in ignorance, having us dance around his well, five-year-old phallic they object they, with they, ribbons? People have been doing it for years, know fully well, that is phallus. Wow. But wow. That's what it means to wrap around uh, a ribbon around the maypole. It's a sexual uh, symbol. Wow. Another childhood memory ruined. Um, I wouldn't uh, be so alarmed. It's, it's just Britain has always been kind of pagan in in many respects. So Morris dancing is a pagan. Uh, rit well, it's a pagan ritual. It's to it's to honour the goddess of fertility. That's what Morris dancing is. So we had these Asherol poles, didn't we? What was it? Yeah, um, in the yeah, Old Testament? In the Old Testament. But um, that's kind of different to what they're doing because they're more to do it around Easter because Easter was all about fertility. Asteros and. Uh, Asteros and, yeah. Ishtar. I got a, a photo which I found really revealing. This is Chartres Cathedral in France. Uh, it's one of the biggest cathedrals in France. It's got a labyrinth. It, in it's the Catholic floor, inlaid into the, the floor. floor. Yeah, inlaid. Oh, I've never seen anything like it. They get bigger than that. Um, but if you uh, look at it from that angle, it looks like the female womb. Right. Um, when you turn it upside down. Yeah, yeah. That's what it's about. It talks about the fertility sexual again. revolution, it's about the fertility and the worship of sex. Because it's feminine, it talks about the goddess within you, and so it appeals to Catholics because of Mary. The Queen of Heaven. The Queen of Heaven. That Jeremiah alluded to. These are, again. Wow, wow. Um. But this is being lapped up by the ecumenical churches in Milton well, yeah, Keynes, it's, it's who advertise these kind of yeah, outings. It's also promoted by Hope Together and Scripture Union. Uh, for six Scripture year old, Union? We've yeah, got for, Scripture Union in Bletchley. What's wrong for, with those uh, guys? For six-year-old children, it's marketed for children. But the mechanism in a labyrinth is the same as in a Ouija board. Um, it's all about focus and concentration. Wow, wow. Um, it's it's not different. It's the same mechanism. The uh, earliest part of the alchemists were warn people stay away from them. Well, that one. Towards your face. That's it. What's that one, Miguel? It's a, a meditation labyrinth, and they've done this in. It's a healing circle labyrinth in California. It's not saying where it is. Whereabouts in California it is, but it looks like it is in a a Methodist church or some sort of church because it's got an altar with a cross. Right. Oh yes. So it's promoting the aspect of spirituality, uh, not relational. There's a, a marriage. Someone get married on the labyrinth. Right. Right. As well. 
Can I show you this, Miguel? Because this is a map of Milton, Ki part of Milton Keynes. Just... This is Campbell Park, and it's got something called an armillary sphere. Here we are. It oh, looks it's... very much like a, a labyrinth to me. Could you just confirm if that's a labyrinth or a harmless maze? It's not a maze, it's, it's a labyrinth. Because there's no dead ends. It's just constant. Thank you. Yeah. I'm going to go there and... Um, and so that, that is uh, Druids uh, doing the labyrinth. Okay. And that's a fire labyrinth. So they, they walk through fire. Um, there are videos of these on YouTube. So there's a photo of a woman banging a drum. She's very pagan to nature, nature worship and she calls upon her spirit guides to help her through the labyrinth. So these these are again pagans. But these same devices are in a promoted by Scripture Union and churches. Take care, Miguel. God bless, mate. Thanks so much for your time. Right, bye then.